one of the most important things is anything in our life, any place where it is, there's always halakha for it. Whether it's a job that a person has, or family, or how to be mechanic, children, whatever it is, there's always halakha, how to do it. And uh, Baruch Hashem, we're very privileged tonight to have people really working hard for the past two, three weeks to set up this event, to make it happen. We want to say thank you to Dr. Sutton. We want to say thank you. We want to say a big chazakawaruk to Odalia. We have Barachiel, uh, Barachiel Studios. Thank you for coming to the sponsor this, sponsor this uh, the, the recording for tonight for anyone that wants to see it. Mostly we want to say a big thank you. It came from very far away. Rabbi Krohn. Um, it's, I, I heard some of the lectures on the internet. And also we, have, we were privileged to have the rabbi's father here a couple of weeks ago. It's an amazing event. Uh, I myself watched uh, the Shear several times. So I want to say thank you for everyone who joined, who participated, and who helped make this happen. Thank you, DJ Maimon. Beautiful job so far. And Bezrat Hashem Rabbi Bechavod, we're excited to hear uh, your words of inspiration. Thank you very much, Rabbi Yeshua. You, uh, you listed all the people that were so involved in arranging the event, but you, you forgot to mention yourself. So uh, thank you to you. And um, it really truly is an honor to be here tonight, especially if my father, the one and only Rabbi Pesach Ron, was here not long ago. So uh, I try to uh, give nachas and uh, follow in my father's footsteps. I, some of you have even already approached me that, and Rabbi Yeshua mentioned, I have the great school, I have the great honor of, of giving some shiurim on TorahAnytime.com. A lot of them are focused on halacha, and like Rabbi Yeshua mentioned, Everywhere you go, everywhere you go and everything you do in life is really guided and determined by the halacha. So since we have, thank you, yeah, you could all come close. Um, think, since you're all looking to get married, to find the shidduch, the best, the only way really to build the bias never be Yisrael is to do it al pi halacha and to start it. And what we're going to do tonight is we're going to just go through the guidelines of what is a person obligated to say when giving information about Shiduchim, whether it's about yourself or whether it's about somebody else. What do you have to say? What are you not allowed to say? When do you say it? We'll try to give some examples. We'll try to uh, talk about some personal examples. and. We'll have some time, perhaps, for questions and answers at the end, and you could certainly raise your hand in the middle and ask questions if anything is not clear or something is uh, on your mind. I can't necessarily answer every specific question, but the general guidelines we'll try, we'll try, to, we'll try to go through. So the reason why this is a complicated topic is because there's really two averot, two sins that a person needs to keep in mind when thinking about the halacha of research and information by Shaduchim. One is very famous. You all know of the Avera of Lashon Hara. You're not allowed to say something negative about somebody else. Somebody says, oh, you're friends with him? You're friends with her? No, tell me about them. I'm thinking of maybe dating them. Ah, they're horrible people. They're really, I'm really just friends with them because I have to be. So that, that's Lashon Hara. So we know about the Avera of Lashon Hara. So people think, and I used to think this also until I learned all the halachot. I used to think that when you give information about Shiduchim, you're not allowed to say anything negative. Yeah, it's Lashon Hara. You're not allowed to say, and you're only allowed to say good. So you have to keep in mind that there's another Avira, and that is not as famous. And that's what's called Lo Samod Adam Reyecha. Lo Samod Adam Reyecha literally means you're not allowed to stand on the blood of your friend. But the Gemara tells us, and everything we're saying is all based on the Chafetz Chaim, the one who determines, you know, who decided all the halachos of Lashon Hara, that if there's something negative, that can affect, that can harm somebody else, and you know that information, you must tell the person. You must tell the person. If you know that they're dating a certain boy or a certain girl, and that person has something terribly wrong with them, 
and they're not going to know, you are obligated to tell that person. So now what we have to figure out is, whoa, how do I balance that? On one hand, there's Lashon Hara. On the other hand, there's Losam and Adam Reyacha. So how does this all play out? So there's, really we could categorize it, just in the whole thing, into two, two categories. Number one, there's something that is called a chesaron atzum. We're going to be using that term a lot of times tonight. A chesaron means something that's negative, something that's wrong, something that's bad with a person. Doesn't necessarily mean it's their fault, but it's something that is a chesaron and it's atzum. Atzum means it's a great chesaron. It's something really negative about that individual. But again, it doesn't necessarily mean they're a bad person. They could make a great husband, a great wife, a great father, a great mother, but they have this chesar and atzum. The halacha is that if somebody has a chesar and atzum, you are obligated, not just you can if you want, you are obligated to tell the other party about that chesar and atzum. Whether you're talking about yourself, or whether you're talking about somebody else. So let's say, God forbid, somebody over here, you have a chesar and atzum, let's say. You have to tell the other person about that chesar and atzum. Now we have to talk about when, at what point do you say it? And we have to give some examples of a chesar and atzum. If you're talking about somebody else, someone says, oh, I heard you know you're on this person's resume. Can you tell me about him? Can you tell me about her? And you know that that person has something terribly wrong, you're obligated to tell the other individual. I'll give you some examples in a moment. We'll give you, we'll start off right away with an example. This is the Chafetz Chaim's example. Let's say you know somebody, I don't know how many of you have heard of the organization PUA, Pua is an organization working with infertility, helping couples and singles that are struggling with infertility. And I'm a rabbinic advisor, I have the great source of being a rabbinic advisor for them. And we deal all the time, I deal every day, with people that unfortunately are not able to have children. Now some people don't realize this until after they get married, but some people know in advance that they have a condition, it's not their fault at all, but they, have, they know that they are going to struggle to be able to have children. That, says the Chafetz Chaim, is a chesar and also. The other party is obligated to know about that fact. Now let's say a person has it themselves. Says Rav Moshe Feinstein that you don't have to say it right away in the beginning. If you tell them on the first date, yeah, I have this and this issue, that's it, they're going to say no right away. You're not obligated to say right away. You have to say but only once it starts getting serious. How, after how many dates is it considered that you're getting serious in the relationship? What would you answer? Six? Is that what you said? The answer is, it depends. If you're Hasidish, it's on date number one. It's already serious. If you're Yeshivish, like me, so I don't know, maybe date three or four is serious. If, the, if you if it's normal in your circles to date 10 or 11 times before somebody proposes, then maybe date number six is serious. Today a girl called me. It was hard because I was in the phone, I was in the car with, with my family, but a girl called me. She, unfortunately, was abused as a child and she has struggled her entire life because of the abuse that she was at. She suffered when she was a child. She didn't tell me who abused her, but she was abused and she suffered terrible trauma. And she still suffers from it. And she is dating a boy seriously. And she asked me, I was her rabbi years ago uh, in, in school, and she asked me, do I have to tell the boy about this trauma, this abuse that I went through? And I felt bad, but that is the answer. She has to tell the boy. Now she said, do I have to tell him tonight? I said, well, what date are you up to? So she told me what date number. I said, no, you don't have to tell him tonight. I said, but, I said, is, he, is there a chance he's gonna propose to you tonight? She said, no, it's not that far along. He's not gonna propose. Okay, fine, so you don't have to say tonight. You have time to say. But she, it's not her fault. She's gone to therapy and she's in a good place. But she, but she had, but the other party needs to know, and so too as far as fertility. I have been called so many times, way too many times, by girls and women that they are on the resume of a friend of theirs, and they know about this friend of theirs that they suffer from anxiety, they suffer from depression, they're on medication, and someone calls them and says, "Oh, so tell me about this girl." 
Now they know this information about them. The halacha is that they have to say. However, it's very important, if the person themselves are going to say, then you don't have to say. You don't have to say. If you are, at, if the person says, listen, you better not tell anybody, so you tell them, listen, that halacha is that the other party is entitled to know. But that is the first halacha, as far as a chesor and otzum. If you're saying about yourself, then before it gets serious, before, when it starts getting serious, you have to say, and this is the hardest halacha for tonight, and that is, if you're talking about somebody else, and the other individual is not going to say, you have to say right away. Right away. It's very challenging, because you like the person, but the other, if the other person refuses to say, you have to say right away. And those are a few examples. Someone that knows that they struggle with fertility, someone that's depressed and anxiety, on medication for these type of things, that is a chesar and also. And a person themselves, they should say it, because this way they can say it at the right time. Yaakov, you have a question? Yeah, why, I mean, in the same way that it, it's the person, individual choice to say it, that they have a few days to say it, why wouldn't the same thing be true by a reference that he tells them right away? So that's a very good question. Yeah. It's, it's a very good question. I, I can tell you're a Talmud Chacham, because you're asking a very advanced question. But the answer is, Rav Moshe Feinstein discusses this, when you're dealing with yourself, there's something that's called chayach al-kaidman, that you have a right to do what's best for yourself. You're not allowed to trick anybody else. That, that, that you're not entitled to do. But you're entitled to develop a relationship first with the boy or the girl. And then once they start liking you, so then, you know, I'll tell you, you know, the truth is I have this chesar and atzum. And then hopefully they'll be able to take the whole picture. But when you're dealing with somebody else, so the Avera of the Salman of Damriyacha kicks in right away. That you can't wait. That if the person is not going to say. So that kicks in right away. Hold on one second. Rav Moshe Feinstein has a fascinating chuvo. And you're all big boys and girls, so we could talk about maybe sensitive things. Rav Moshe Feinstein says that a girl asked him the following question. She was a Balas chuvo, very special, amazing. She gave away everything and she started keeping kosher. She started keeping Shabbat. It was one thing that she still couldn't get rid of. She had her boyfriend from when she was not religious, and she still lives with her boyfriend. But everything else, she does. She keeps Shabbat, she keeps kosher, she keeps everything, but she still lives with the boyfriend. And she wants to date a yeshiva guy who's sitting and learning. And, but, you know, this, she just can't get. So Rav Moshe Feinstein tells her, he said, first of all, you should not be in the college dormitory anymore. You gotta get your own apartment, and you should not be in the dormitory anymore. You should be on your own. And Rav Moshe Feinstein told her, yes, you need to say this. Now, in other words, you better not date him right now, and you better, you know, get rid of this part. It's, it's difficult. I'm not saying it's not difficult. But that is something that, of course, is very, very important to him, and he would want to know. And many posts can say, someone who is addicted to smoking, someone who is addicted to gambling, someone who is addicted to alcohol, those are all chesar and atzons. If you know a guy who has a terrible temper, Anything you do to him, he starts screaming. That's a chesar and atzum. He's, he, he's got to work on it before he gets married. A girl one time called me. She had a roommate in, in seminary. And she one time screamed at her. Like her friend screamed at her. Like, should, and now she was asked about a shidduch. Should she tell that? I said, no, that's not a chesar and atzum. People get angry. Things happen. No, but it, but it happened twice. I'm like, a whole seminary year, it only happened twice? That's very good. Tell me about her. I maybe have a boy for her. That's very impressive. No, but, so you have to know what's a chasar and You have to see what's the halacha by a chasar and not a chasar and atzum. You had a question before in the back? Oh, to age. Okay, we're going to get to age very soon. Okay, I'll let you finish. Sorry, Emeni was how old? 90 years old. So you're right, everything's possible. But since you asked the question, we'll skip to that right now. Age, what would you think? Is age a chesar? Let's say someone is quote unquote older. 
Is that a chesaron? Which we didn't say what the halach is yet for a chesaron. Is that a chesaron atzu? So the answer is it really depends. And I'm sorry, but it really makes a difference if you're a boy or a girl. A girl that's 35, for a boy that's 35, so fertility wise, that's, that's totally fine. When it comes to a girl, so we know the fertility, the eggs start to, the, the quality and the quantity start to decline at the age of 35, but you're a thousand percent right that a girl could have, a young lady could have fertility way past 35, 36, 41, 42, 43. So a person needs to know a lot of these types of questions have to be discussed with a doctor. Once the doctor knows more, not just as far as fertility and age, but also as far as many sicknesses, a person has diabetes, is that a chesar and matzum? Well, it depends. It might depend how serious are the cases. A person has Crohn's disease. Is that something that's, do they have a mild case? There are many, many situations where I can't paskin for someone until I speak to the doctor, until I know how serious it is. And age has to do with that as well. For also, let's say a boy is 30 years old. So if a girl is 28, that's great. But if the girl is 34 and he's 30, so that's, maybe he doesn't want that. But let's say the boy is not 30, let's say the boy is 37. So 34 is the perfect age for him, perhaps. So it all age is a very hard question to narrow down on an exact number. If you're this old, you have to say. It depends, it depends on a lot, a lot of the, um, uh, a lot of the around, what's going on. What is the halacha by a chesaron? A chesaron is something that's negative, it is negative, but it's not a chesaron also, it's not something so, so terrible. Let's say, what's a good example of a, of a chesaron? Let's say a person is just a messy person. They're just a messy person. There are people that are nice and perfect and neat and everything, every little thing that's out of order, they'll get, meh, they're just a little messy. So let's say that's a chesaron. I don't even know if that's such a chesaron, but let's say, so the halacha is that when somebody asks you, you're not obligated to say, oh, by the way, they, you know, they're, 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 they're always messy. By the way, his shirt is always tucked out, and he's always, his pie is always crooked, or whatever. You're not obligated to say it, unless, can anybody guess, can anybody figure out what would be the halacha? You don't have to say if someone has a chesaron, that's not a chesaron also, unless, anyone want to try? Unless the person asks you, but says, listen, I'm doing research for my daughter, for my son. She needs somebody that is perfectly organized and neat and always on time. And, okay, so for them, that is a chesar. And you know that's not the case, then you, then you have to say it. Let's say they want someone who's a big tamid chacham. I want him to have finished shas already, but he's only 23. I don't care, I want him to already. So for them, if he has not finished all of Shas, for them that is a chesara. Okay, for most people it's not. But for them that is a chesara, then you have to say it. Anything that they ask you directly, then for them that shows that they're cared, that, that they are that they are very not good about it. Yeah. I'm just trying to understand, is the reason why I'm not going to say because it's not for Samo, and then when they ask it, it's because we don't assume that they will be mad with. I don't necessarily have to assume that they would care about it. If they don't care about it, so then it's not like Salman Adam Reyafa. But if they ask me, that shows that they do care. That makes it more Exactly, yeah. So then it kicks in right away that you're obligated to say, unless the person themselves are going to say. So then you're in a tricky situation because they ask you straight out, but you don't have to say because the person themselves are going to say at a later time. Okay, so that's a... Uh, um, what would you say to the following? Let's say, and unfortunately this is a very common question nowadays, let's say the boy or girl, a wonderful boy, a wonderful girl, but unfortunately they have a brother or a sister that is not Shomer Torah and Mitzvot. They don't keep the Torah and the Mitzvot. Is that, what would you say? But they, they are, but they have a sibling that is not. Is that a chesaron? A chesaron atzum? Is that not even a chesaron? What, 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 what would you think? Depends well, on the family. What? I, I would say it depends on the family. Oh, that's, I think that's a very good answer. It depends on the family. A lot of families that, as long as the boy or girl themselves are, are religious, that I'm, I'm okay with that. But the fact that they have a brother or a sister that's not, okay, what does that have to do with them? And yet there's other families that no, the, the, the yichus needs to be impeccable. They come from a great rabbinic family, and that would be that would be something that they, they would not 
they, they wouldn't be able to, to deal with. They wouldn't know how to, how, to, how to talk to the person. They wouldn't know how to deal with them. So, yeah, so that would depend. Sorry? So, right? Okay, so now, right? Lavan. Yeah, so, so Yaakov Avinu's father-in-law was none other than Lavan. It's true. That's, that's a good point. So there are people that could totally get along with it. And the this father and this girl. What? Judge a girl based on her siblings. That's what yeah. Rashi means. Right. Rashi says you could judge it just like the brother. Right? Exactly. Very good. Okay, there we go. We got a very knowledgeable crowd over here. So a lot of these types of cases we're not, can really depend on the situation, but some are clearly not a chasar al and some clearly are. What would you say in the following? Let's say a certain family, they don't believe in getting vaccinated. They don't believe in getting vaccinated. Is that a chasar? Is that a chasar al Is that something, yeah? So some people would say, sure that's a chasar al I want that. I, I spoke to somebody, a girl called me, she said she's in the middle of dating a boy, this was a few months ago, and she's not engaged, so I'm assuming it's over by now. She was dating a boy that he said he doesn't believe in any medicine, doesn't believe in going to doctors, doesn't believe in any medication, he has a headache, he won't even take an Advil or a Tylenol, and he, no doctors. So she told me, she's like, should I marry the guy? I said, listen, I can't tell you where you should marry him. I said, but how does that make you feel? She said, that makes me feel very uncomfortable. I, we go to doctors, whatever. He lost trust in all doctors, and ever since, you know, he doesn't, he not going to any doctors, no vaccines, no doctors, no nothing. So if, so that I would think, I would think to most people, you know, they go to doctors at least, you know, so that would be a chaser and also. Um, what would you say, what would you say to the following? Rav Yashif says, this is a, a sad situation. There was a girl who tried to commit suicide, but I guess fortunately, um, she, she failed and it didn't work. So she ended up in the hospital and she went to therapy, etc. And now, now she's good. Now she's, she's on much, much better ground. Eliyasha says that that's a chaser and atzo because life is very stressful and these things could come back and Eliyasha felt that that's something that a person needs to say. On the other hand, Rabbi Shlomo Zaman Arbach said that there was a story of a boy who took a gun and he shot his Rosh Hashiva, his rabbi, he shot him, but he missed. So, fortunately, Rav Shlomo Zalman says, you don't have to say, you don't have to say, because, okay, you know, he got angry, people get angry, and, uh, and so, and, what? Someone else will say, else will say it. yeah, but Rav Shlomo will say, hey, listen, he missed anyways, and, no, I'm joking, but, what? Well, yeah, if I don't, don't marry him, trust me. If you find out that you, you read to, to this boy, I don't know, this was a question that came up years ago, because this was Rav Shlomo Zaman Arba, who, who passed away quite some time ago. Um, but oh, but I, I brought up that case, not just to get you to laugh, but because we can't be so quick to judge what is a chesarin and, what is a, and what's a chesarin also. A person has to be very careful to, to, before, before they judge. I'll tell you another halacha that's very important. Not as far as Lesaman and Amriyaka. A lot of times, a boy or girl will go out with somebody and they want to say no. Do you ever have this? You call the Shad Khan, you call the Shad, he say, listen, I really appreciate your time. I, thank you so much, but it, it's not for me. I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna discontinue. What's the first question they're gonna ask you? Why? 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 What's wrong? It looked so good, it sounded so good. What was wrong? So now, if you say, I, I can't say, it's Lashon Har. So they're gonna say that, oh, you're being picky and you don't want a reputation of being picky. Nobody wants a reputation of being picky. So what a lot of people do is that they say, they tell the Shatan, well, he wasn't polite, you know, he was very disrespectful to me and everything I said, he disagreed and, and she was this and she, so people, that is Lashon Har. Because what was the point in that? What do you gain from saying? You gain from it, but that's not a reason to say Lashon Hara, just because you personally gain over such a thing. The only time that that would be allowed to say to the Shachim why you're saying no is if it's for that person's benefit. Honestly, how could it be for that person's benefit? That is, if you're dealing with a type of Shachim, maybe it's the boys or the girls aunt or uncle, so they know them very well. If they could help them, if it's something that they could learn from and they could help them, then they would be able to speak to them and say, listen, I don't know if you realize, but you know why the girl said no to you? Because you were disrespectful to her. 
And you know, you, you gotta be careful. You have to treat them with respect. I don't know, open up the door for them. Whatever, whatever it means to be respectful to a girl. What is a girl, what is a girl like? Well, you know, you took her to a restaurant, but you only ordered food for yourself, not for her. So, you know, don't do that next time. So th there are things where uh, the, the shantan could help the individual. I'll tell you, I one time went out with a girl, and on paper, you know how they say, on paper it was perfect. She was from a great family, and we heard X, Y, and Z, and everything was great, and I knew her brother, her brother's a very nice guy, and I come on the date, and I'm not gonna say too many details, but she was just doing strange things the whole day. First of all, she didn't look at me for four hours straight. She didn't look at me the whole time I'm sitting across from her, and she was looking that way. So, okay, maybe she was embarrassed, maybe she was uh, awkward, I don't know, but like, and she was, she was just doing strange things, besides she was doing strange things the whole day. It was, oh, she kept interrupting me, and she kept on like saying the same thing over and over again, she said like the same sentence, like, like hundreds of times in, in a four hour span. It was just like odd, it was, and she seemed so normal, and, and the family for sure is normal, you know. So, I, I said to my parents when I came home, I said, I have to go out again because like it doesn't make sense. It's not like okay, listen, she's weird and I'm normal, right? So, so I, I can't go. She might. I don't know. So I went out a second time and she did the same thing. Four hours straight. She just it was it was just horrible. And and I wasn't sure should I say something to the shatchan or not. I mean, I mean, my parents you know, should we say something? And we decided to say something because. She'll never get married if she continues doing this. She would. She really needs to know that you, you have to be. You can't be doing those things on a date. And the shachin told. We so we told the shachin. The shachin told the girl. Told the parents. The parents told the shachin. Said, "Tell the crones. Tell Rabbi Crone that we thank them for telling that to us about our daughter." We had no idea our daughter does this on dates. How are we supposed to know? We're not sitting in the back seat. So we had no idea. Now that you told us this, we could speak to her about it. We'll tell her that this is not acceptable. And they told her, and she got married to somebody that I know, a great guy. So, so that could be for benefit. I'll tell you a story. A girl one time called me, a student of mine, that she was dating a boy for a while, and, she, and the boy was disrespectful to her. And she wanted to know, can she tell the shachan why she's saying no? The shachan is pressured her. Why are you saying no? Why are you saying no? That's why you're not married, because she was an older single at that point. And uh, that's why you're not married, because you're too picky. And she doesn't want that reputation. It was very not nice of the shachan. But I said, and I was on the phone with her for a while. I remember I was on my cell phone in my backyard, and uh, while I was talking to her. And, she, and I said, I'm suspecting that you want to say, because you just want to get back at the guy. Is that, is, that, uh, is that true? Because I don't see any point in telling the shachan except for the fact to help your reputation. You just say that because you don't want... She said, yeah, you're right, you're right. I'm upset at him because he treated me not right and I, I want the shachan to know that he's a bad guy. I said, I said, that's your opinion that he's a bad guy and you, you didn't get along, but it doesn't necessarily mean that he's a terrible person. And I give you a bracha that in the schus that you're not gonna say, Hashem should bless you with the shidduch this year. And she's like, Amen, she was fighting. She said, Amen, 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 Amen. And, uh, um, and within the year, she got engaged. She got married less than a year later. Not because of my bracha, nothing to do with me. I'm not a holy Jew, but, but for, because she was keeping halacha. And she got married on the West Coast. So she sent me an invitation, but not a ticket. So uh, I didn't go to the wedding. But uh, um, I was looking, like, I kept on checking the invitation. Like, what do you mean? How could you not send me a ticket? But uh, but uh, she did. But but that's but 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 that is just important to know when it comes to saying information afterwards and the reasons afterwards. Any questions till here? No. I'll tell you one other halacha, which is important that we've said about a chesar atzum and about a chesar. So there is. Oh, before I get to that. What would you say to the following? A broken engagement. Someone has a broken engagement. Yes. Is that a chasaran atzum or a chasaran? Or maybe there's nothing wrong with that. It happens to everybody. You, someone says to you, oh, you know this girl? Tell me about her. Now you know a couple of years ago she had a broken engagement. Maybe she was engaged for a week. Maybe she was engaged for a month. What would you say? You have to say that? And the family that's calling you has no idea. You have to say it? No? Yes? 
depends on the family? Maybe. I mean, everything could depend. You know, some people are makbit, some are not. But as a rule, the fact that this girl or boy a couple of years ago made a decision and for whatever reason changed her mind, or maybe the other party changed her mind, is that a chasar al I guess, yeah. Yeah? Oh, very interesting. He's saying that maybe the person why the, the reason why the person broke the engagement is because they, they, they're going to get cold feet. And then it's going to happen to them again. They're going to get engaged and they're going to get cold feet again. Interesting. Could be. So, Rab Shlomo Zaman Arbach says that that is a chasar al wow. And Rab Chaim Kanevsky says it's not. So there you go. Amach Lokas. It's not the first one that we have in Halacha. And it's not the last. So, it's uh, the best would be is if the, the party themselves, they'll say. If they will say like we said before, then you don't have to say. And you should tell the person, so listen, it's my pleasure to be on your resume, but you need to tell me, are you going to say this about yourself? And I'll say, yeah, of course I'm going to say, I'm not going to keep that secret. Okay, good. Then you're off the hook. Then you're off the hook. And uh, then you don't, then you don't uh, have to say. So a lot of these types of examples. Um, what's another example? This we said. Rav Shalom Zaman Arbach said, Let's say there was, a, there was a person who couldn't hear in one ear. Couldn't hear in one ear. And Shlomo Zaman said that that's for sure not a chasar atzum. He says, it's not a big deal. You hear in the other ear. Not a problem. He says, he says I, I went to the doctor one time and I found out that I can't hear in one of my ears. I had no idea. So it's totally not a problem. So, Eliyashah says, if someone donated a kidney. So now, if you're good at math, how many kidneys do they have left? One. So Eliyashah says, that's a chasar atzum. Now, it's a tremendous chesed to donate a kidney. That shows that the person is a very kind individual. But the fact of the matter is that they only have one kidney. And that's a little bit dangerous. If chas something happens to that kidney, they're in big, big trouble. So a person is, is entitled to know that. So in a lot, many, many, many types of situations that can come up. I'll tell you one other halacha. Yeah, your question? I want to go back to the question more about the rabbi shooting someone. Okay, yeah. Okay. Yeah, she is supposed to go with it. Correct. That's a like Gemara Right. Right. This is Talmud. So right. I'm wondering if the Rosh Hashiva said, no, you don't have to tell anyone because really I deserve to be shot. Oh, uh, okay. So I, I don't know. I don't know the story. And I and, and I don't know if everyone would agree with Rosh Hashiva Zaman or Rosh Hashiva. It's very possible that this person, yes, like we said before, some people get angry. Okay, it's not acceptable, but it doesn't necessarily make it a chasar and atzum. People get angry every once in a while. But yeah, but that, that's where they're taking it to a whole new level. Uh, that, you know, 100%. Uh, definitely. Yeah, sure. Okay. I want to know what's the middle ground between the you have to put to what you do and things being meant to be. I know you can say, oh, if it's really meant to be, then you'll meet her somehow. Or, right. But I don't believe it's realistic, because I know, like, in the Midbar, the man came to their doorstep, so it depends on how much belief you have in something, and that, okay. gives, and that gives you okay. power. Right. So I gave a shiur this past Monday night, six days ago, um, on the topic of losing your bashert. You know what bashert is? Bashert means, like, it's destined. I'm destined for this girl. I'm destined for this boy. And I gave a shiur on, is it possible for a boy or a girl to lose the bashet? And it was an honor of Tuba Av, because Tuba Av was the Friday before. So to my Monday night girls, that I, former students of mine, I give once a year, we talk about shiduchim and advice about shiduchim. We didn't talk about these halachot, but I spoke about losing the bashet. And what I'm about to tell you, to answer your question, I realize that not everyone agrees with what I'm about to tell you, but this is what my rebbeim told me, my rabbis, that a person, it's based on the Gemara in Saita, a person needs to make smart decisions in all of life, but including by Shaduchim. A person cannot just blindly go into Shaduchim and say, listen, I could, I could decide whatever I want because 
right? 40 days before uh, a, a person's, before conception, a Paschal comes out, and this person is going to say, I, I'm going to marry this person, I don't know who they are, but whoever it is, it's already determined. So I can decide whatever I want. And I can say no to that girl, because no, because uh, some of her aunt is that I once met her aunt, and I didn't like, so I could make decisions like this, and I could say, I only want to live in, a, in Israel, and I can, no. If a person makes silly not smart decisions, they can lose the basher. It is possible. It depends on how you understand the Gemara, but you have to do, like, to use the term you use, hishtablut. You have to do your hishtablut. Your hishtablut is to do research, to find out at the, about the person, and to put your best foot forward. You can't, like, be disrespectful to a girl on a date and say, listen, I can talk to her just like I talk to my buddies. If, it's, if, 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 if we're supposed to get married, Hashem will make sure we get married, and if not, not. No, 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 no. You have to be respectful. And a girl is the same way. Please, no, none of the girls get insulted, but the guys will understand this example. A girl will say, oh, why do I have to put on makeup for the date? He, he should like me the way I am. And what he expects, that when I wake up in the morning with the kids, I'm going to be wearing makeup, he should know what I look like in the... No, that's silly. That's non. That's nonsense. A boy wants to be attracted to a girl. Not a healthy boy wants to be attracted to a girl. Has to put her best foot forward. You have to be nice. You have to be sweet. And yes, you have to look your best. Oh, it was a long day at work. What time is it? Oh, he's picking me up in twenty minutes. Forget it. Okay, I'll just like put on anything. I'll just no, 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 no. A boy, you have to do your hishtab look. And a guy also. You gotta get dressed. You, you have to shave. If, if a person shaves, you have to shave for the day. You can't say, listen, I can do whatever I want because if it's meant to be, it's meant to be. No, you have to do your proper hishtablut. And yes, Hashem will take care of the rest. The million dollar question is, what is my hishtablut? How far do I have to go? That you have to speak to your rabbi or your rebbetzin or who you speak to. We, we don't have prophets. We don't have a navi anymore nowadays. What is considered your hishtabu and what is not? That's difficult to know sometimes. But uh, but but you did. But the answer to your question is yeah, you definitely have to do your proper hishtabu. You just raise your hand. No. Yeah. It could be such a concept, meaning it could be, I mean, we don't know what was announced in heaven, who you're going to marry, but you have to make a decision, an educated decision, based on what you have in front of you. And it could be a person that you would be able to be married to, but you're right, not right now. Now, your example was as far as spirituality, that you're growing and you're, let's say you're growing at a fast pace at this point in your life, and this person has, you know, leveled out. So... Right now, you're in a, in a situation of growth, and you want to talk about the very Torah on the date a little bit, and you want to hear something on the parsha. and he's not uh, like that. Maybe he was like that in yeshiva a few years ago, and maybe one day he will be. But right now, you're not going to be able to respect him. Right now, you're not going to be able to respect him. So, so yeah, so right now, it's not a good shidduch. That's for sure. Does that mean that if you date and you realize, listen, this guy's not for me, I'm, I'm, I'm more, much more spiritual than him. A few years down the road, if you're both not married and you hear about him, that no, but he's really made inroads and he's grown, there may be a shidduch at that point, just because it wasn't a few years ago. And the truth is, it's not only in spirituality, it's in other things also. I know plenty of people, either I know them or I've spoken to them on the phone, or when I speak to them, they are not ready to get married now. And to anybody at this point, they're still going to the therapist, they're still getting over anger issues, they're still, but in a couple of years, they will be the greatest catch. They're a great guy, a great girl, but not now, but not now, in a couple of years. So there's definitely such a concept, there's definitely such a concept. We wish we knew who and when and what, but definitely such a concept can certainly exist. Who? Boys? No, but like, children, I mean, this is Right. They're not 
not interested in like where you're headed. They just want to know where you are right now. So it's not accurate. You're, you're right. It's, it's, it's a shame. On a phone call or from a piece of paper, a resume, you're trying to, uh, uh, you know, with shots up, you're trying to, uh, you know, to, to estimate what a person is, trying to define what a person is. That's why we were talking this past Monday night about boys asking for pictures. I'm not going to get into that because I don't want cups and tomatoes thrown at me. <laughs> should, boys, should boys ask for pictures on the resume? And if they do, should a girl give it? Is it smiut? Is it not smiut? So, so, you can't understand a person from a piece of paper then or even from a picture. For four hours. I'm sorry? You don't want to like, you know, be in an awkward situation. It's just someone you're typing a picture. And... Okay, so the, there, there's a tzad for yes, there's a tzad for no. We can, we'll let you guys find it out afterwards. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, so to go back for a second, are you saying that? Uh, yeah. Okay, what's, see, uh, he's a mensch. Ladies first. Uh, uh, what's yeah. the point of the resume to pictures if it's all hyped up and it's not really It's a good point. I don't, I, don't have, I don't have an answer for that. Her question was that on the resume, well, I did this. You can put this, you can put this, but it's not really Right, so you hope the person's telling the truth. But a lot of it is just facts. A lot of it is just facts, so that's true. Um, but I like this, and I'm very spiritual. Yeah. So that's what dating is for, to see if the resume is, is MS or is a jacket. Yeah, that's what the dating is for. Yeah. Don't marry a guy based on the resume. If you don't see it on the date, so don't, don't go for it. Yeah. Now, just to go back on what she said, so when you go out with somebody, you have to kind of see eye to eye. And you can't invest on the fact that she might become more religious later. 100%. Both directions. You can't, that's a very good point, and I'm sure you would agree with this. You can't marry somebody expecting them to change. Expecting them to change. You expect them how they are. Now, some people are constantly changing, but you can't thank So you can't, let's say you have someone just, a boy or a girl that is very, very religious, and they have a guy or a girl, the opposite, that is way below them uh, on a religious level, but they're gorgeous. So like, you know, if you promise me you'll become more religious, I'll marry you. Oh, sure. No, it doesn't work like that. It, it, you have to see the growth. They don't have to be there yet, but you have to see that that's the path that they're on. You have to see that that's where they're going. That's what they appreciate. That's what they could respect. That, that's important. You can believe in the potential, but not to respect them. Right, you could believe in the potential. Yeah, but you can't marry them. I'm only willing to marry a rabbi. I wasn't a rabbi when I got married. Did my wife want to marry a rabbi? I don't know. You gotta ask her. But but she saw that I have maybe potential to be a rabbi, and maybe if that's someone should. But I wasn't a rabbi at that point. You grow together, and you grow. That's the key. You appreciate each other. You look forward to seeing each other. If you're dreading the next date, that's not a good sign. You you're looking forward. You're attracted to them. Attracted to them doesn't necessarily mean physically. Attracted means. Personality-wise, I'm looking forward to the next date. That's a good sign. If you're not looking forward, I've had I've asked that to so many girls. When girls call me, students of mine, I don't know what should I say. Yes, I'm not like, sure. I'm not sure how I feel. Let me ask you a question. I've asked this to so many girls, and I've gotten one of two answers. I said, if let's say the boy would say no to you right now, how would you feel? Would you feel devastated, or would you feel like there's a load off your shoulders? <laughs> so one girl told me, I would just feel so relieved. I said, then this guy's not for you. Then you're obviously not, so maybe you, I can't pinpoint why I'm saying no, but that's it. you can't get married to someone like that. And, uh, and other girls that I speak to said, no, what do you mean? I, I look forward to seeing him. I'm just not sure about this, and I'm not sure about that. If you look forward to seeing him, and then they, you're attracted to them. And if it's not, you're on the same wavelength, you grow together. And that's, uh, that's, that's, you know, that's I think, the recipe uh, for success. Okay, we're ready. Time flies. I don't know how it happened, but it's already it's already more than forty five minutes. I give you all a bracha, and if you have more questions afterwards, I'll give you all my phone number. If anyone has any questions in halacha, you could definitely you could come over to me. I'll give you my phone number. It's my it's my pleasure. I, I I'm on the phone all the time. But I give you all a bracha, and I repeat the bracha to you girls that in the schut, in the merit of all of you coming tonight. You came tonight, not for the good food, which looks like the good food, but you came to hear a shiur, to hear words of Torah, to follow halacha like Rabbi Yeshua said. That's what HaKadosh Baruch Hu wants to see. 
And in that schus, in that merit, you'll all find the right one, the karov, and you don't have to send me tickets if you get married out of town, but I want invitations. That much I do want. Bezat Hashem. Have a good night.